Did you ever think as a fireman you'd become a roofer? Well, yeah, because I was a roofer before I was a fireman. Okay. <laughs> so uh, got into roofing in high school, got set up with a guy just selling roofs, and then had a lot of relatives in the fire service. So when I graduated high school, kind of knew I wanted to head in that direction uh, with the fire department. You know, had to go through the fire academy, EMT school, paramedic school, which took a little bit of time. So also was pretty independent. Like I was ready to get out of the house, uh, ready to start my own thing. So uh, ended up starting, went to work for a guy uh, doing roof repairs. Um, So basically I met this guy at his house at 6 a.m. He dropped me off, you know, 5, 6 p.m. And then I'd go to the fire academy at night um and did that for i guess about a year and so once i graduated the fire academy emt school uh started getting out testing for fire departments and then started my own company and so and honestly i just did it a a way to make money i would go pass out flyers all day long you know try to draw up some business uh and then i would do the work myself um and just kind of started that way so so you started roofing in high school. What kind of money were you making in high school? So it was better than anybody. Uh, oh, I'm uh, sure. You know, it, it was a good and a bad thing because in high school, like, I didn't even realize you could make, I, it was big money for me, you know, and so I'd go out and sell some roofs, and uh, which was a good and a bad thing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's probably not great for a high school kid to make some of that money mm-hmm. because a lot of it I would go out and spend really on stupid Crazy. stuff. You bet. So, uh, kind of got me in a little bit of trouble there. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I mean, made great money doing that. So, so learning to sell roofs, learning to repair roofs in high school. Did you ever think about going to college? Um, yeah, uh, I did some college, uh, but I, I knew for me, it was like, I knew I wanted to go into the fire service. And so you had to have some college, like I, a lot of the cities wanted you to have 60 hours of college. So I, I went to Eastfield junior college you for bet. a little bit. Now, now that's Eastfield out. college. Huh? You, now that's Eastfield college. Oh, is it? Oh, oh yeah. They, they pull all that junior stuff out. It's, yeah. They're all, it's all part of the Dallas college system or something, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Yeah. So I had gone there, uh, knocked out classes, and then right into the fire academy. And I, I knew that was kind of the direction I wanted to head. At the time, like, man, I just didn't college i don't i don't think i mean it wasn't like it is today i I feel like every kid getting out of high school now feels like they got to go to college uh and that's just bred into them for some reason but it was like because their parents their yeah principals their counselors their teachers their aunts and uncles their grandparents everybody's told them now for the last 40 years if you don't go to college you're never going to amount to anything yeah wasn't really the case back then. One, you know, my parents didn't have the money to send me off to college, so it was either go figure that out on your own, take out student loans, do all that. And I never even saw the need for it because I was like, I, I knew this was the direction I wanted to go with the fire service stuff. So it was like, let me do what I got to do to get that, and then I'll go, you know, start that. So Now, did did your parents go to college? Um, Yeah. Yeah, they they both. My mom was a teacher. Dad owned a business and then became an actual insurance adjuster, uh, which was how I kind of got hooked up with the roofing company, you know, selling roofs in high school. He was doing insurance adjusting uh, and knew a couple of guys, and I was looking for work to do something, and so he was like, we'll go do that. So it's kind of how that started. So, So that explains how you got into roofing. What did you enjoy about it that kept you in it? Looking back on it, man, it, it, uh, a lot of funny, good and bad stories through that. And I also ask my dad sometimes, I'm like, why in the world did you send me to those guys? You bet. Like it was the wildest bunch of guys that, I mean, you know, I think my first day showing up over there to go to work was walking in this kind of old rundown house over in East Dallas with this 300 pound dude sitting in there. 
hanging out, you know, and then all these other guys showing up and I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? And it's like, yeah, y'all get out there and go sell roofs. So it was like, okay. So, you know, learned a lot from that, um, the good and the bad of it. And and then just, I don't know, kind of kept going from there. So how long did you sell roofs? But before you decided, look, I can probably do this on my own. So in high school, I started that like, I guess probably the end of my sophomore year. And re- so, so junior, senior year, you're big pimp and you, you're making money. You're, yeah. you're going to school like, yeah. hey man, the party's on me this weekend. Let's yeah. Go. But again, man, a lot of good and bad stuff out of that. Oh yeah. I, you know, played football in high school, started doing that. And then it was like junior year. I was like, I'm done with sports, like all that. I look back at it now and I'm like, man, I. I loved doing it. I should have kept doing football and that stuff, but it was like, man, I was making money uh-huh. and partying and doing the fun yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah. And it was like, that was just the direction I went at the time. So, um, and then really outside of that, again, like I never really had any intent or wasn't even thinking at the time about starting my own company or doing anything. Um, wasn't until I met, the. Uh, quit left that one group that was selling roofs and then i had went to work for the guy that where i was actually roofing um and it literally like i said i'd meet him at his house and it was me and him going around all day long doing roof repairs uh so he taught me actually how to roof and all that stuff and so once i got that i loved at the time man i you know i was young loved hard work like to me that stuff was fun oh no i get it and just working with your hands and doing that stuff and it was i i enjoyed it so i mean it was like i didn't mind carrying bundles up on the roof and working and tearing stuff up and putting it back together and all that stuff you know and it's funny that but that's what a lot of the trades is tear stuff up and put it back together yeah you know tear out the old put in the new uh tear it out and replace it you know tear it out and rebuild it well whatever it is this video is sponsored by league pro go check out leak-pro.com so are roofers like plumbers or electricians or anybody else do you ever drive down the road with your family and be like yeah i put that roof on oh yeah <laughs> yeah my my wife it drives her nuts i still do it to this day where where i'm driving down the street i'm looking up at the roofs and going man i guess i'm missing shingles over there <laughs> like, uh-huh. that's a potential job so yeah yeah can't get away from that no you can't so, so when you see that, do you pull over, drop off a flyer, a card? Not anymore. I used to. Yeah. 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 When I was doing it on my own, uh, and was really small getting going and all that, man, every, what, which honestly was for 10 years, you know, I, I, um, uh, like me and you had kind of talked before, I never had any intent. I had gotten hired on at the fire department and when I, you know, it was a 24 on 48 off deal. So as soon as I left the fire department, man, I was going out and doing my roofing and just kept it like that for a long time. And really it didn't intend on growing a business, always thought of it as a side job to make extra money. And then it kind of outgrew me. Uh, so we got to a spot where I was like, man, I, I can't do all this on my own and hated not like he didn't to lose business that that was then there i think because it was like you know for the first four or five years i didn't have money to spend on marketing do anything it was and really marketing wasn't near of what it is now like it, it has become an animal a beast yeah yeah so there wasn't really a whole lot of avenues for marketing then uh other than newspapers you know yellow page ads like that was that stuff and so i i would literally go to you know office depot and make thousands of flyers and i would just walk up and down the streets passing out flyers and that was kind of my marketing and it worked back then it worked yeah i mean it it, i always laugh at with stuff it was like those were i hate to be now sound like the old guy but it was like man that felt like that was the good old days like you had your you had your phone number on there you had an answering machine back at the house. You bet. It was like people would call, they'd leave you a message, and you weren't disturbed or having to worry about it until you got home that evening. Mm-hmm. And it was like, man, let me check all my messages. Let me call yep. these people back. Let me set up some appointments. Whereas now it's like, man, you, you got to be immediate. 
you know, it's an immediate, oh yeah, uh, pick up the phone and get with somebody or they're calling the next person. If you don't answer your phone, they're calling the next person. Yeah. 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 So take a second and tell everybody who you are and what you do. Mark Latham um, started Firehouse Roofing. It was actually called Sunrise Roof Repairs when I first started it in 97. Um, Worked at the fire department for 22 years and then just, I guess, three years ago ended up retiring and really focusing all my energy on firehouse roofing and kind of making it better and getting it going so and you were in mckinney the whole time uh started in sherman uh was in sherman for two years and mckinney for 20 so let's go back to when you know you you started with the guy who taught you to work on roofs which is a a completely different thing than selling them yeah selling them you 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 may not even ever get it get out there it's like from the ground it's like yep that roof looks bad you need a new one let's talk about it yeah and i know you do get up there when you started learning to repair roofs, and to me, when I started learning repair plumbing, luckily I worked I worked with some great plumbers when I started in the beginning. And one thing they taught me is, you know, why you always do things right each and every day. A lot of people coming in the trades these days, I think, don't have that attitude. They're like, hey, I just want to make a check. Yeah. You know, and if you learn from a plumber who teaches you shoddy ways and shortcuts and yada 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 that's that's the kind of plumber you're going to be for the most part what made you want to be really good what made you be like look i want to i want to take pride in this man i think that's probably like twofold like i would have to think like some of that is wired into you as a person of just going man i have always taken pride in what i do what i you know, accomplish all these things. The other piece is the leader that you're under. Does that matter to them? Because, you know, I go, I mean, there's always those days where it's like, I'm tired. You bet. I'm whooped. I've been up here on this roof all day long. It's middle of summer. Man, let me just put the shingle in this way instead of that way and get out of here. Right. And it's like, so I think part of it is like that leadership and the accountability. Like the guy that I was with uh, that taught me all that was like that as well. Like, man, he, he took tremendous pride in what we did. So I knew like, I mean, the guy was going to check my work. You bet. He was going to make sure it was up to the standards and all that. And so I think that accountability part also kind of, taught me along the way of like don't stop don't give up don't take a shortcut here or there do it right and uh continue to do that and i think you know i always took a lot of pride once i had kind of got out on my own like one of the big things we would do was like if you had a roof leak well a lot of guys like especially the companies and salesmen like a lot of those guys don't truly know or understand construction and roofing and all that. They're just out selling a product or selling something. And so it, I took a lot of pride in and why I think, you know, I grew and we got so many phone calls was because a lot of people had had their roof worked on two to three times, paid these guys a bunch of money. They never solved the problem. They never fixed it. And then they would call me and go, Hey, Somebody gave me your name and said, you're the man when it comes to finding mm-hmm. this and solving the problem. And so, and I, I love that. Like those were the best calls ever back in the day of like, man, yeah, let's, let's really dig into Oh, I love and, those calls. And uh, fix it because then you're a hero to those people. Mm-hmm. I mean, these people have been through the bad experiences, the wasted money, all this. And then you came in and finally solved their problem. And that was super fun to me doing that. So. No, I, I love that. That that makes me mm, makes me think of a job I did for one of the top neurosurgeons in Dallas. His hot and cold water at home, he, he had problems. He had had a, had a big house and multiple water heaters. And man, when you crawled under it, it's like man, somebody just tied a bunch of stuff together. He had tankless water heaters, which, which luckily I, I've studied. I remember we, we went into a tub that he was doing, and and he's like. Roger, how, how, how come my, my hot water, if I turn on just hot water, it just slows down? I said, well, it's, it's, it's the way the water heater says out. And I said, what do you have it set at? I said, 140? He says, yeah. He said, how'd you know? I said, because you're trying to get the hottest water in here. He says, yeah. I said, okay. Would you ever use 140-degree water in that tub? He said, oh, God, no. 
So, so why haven't Seth had? I said, let's, let's go out. So we did, went, went out, opened up the closet, tweaked it, turned the thermostat down. When McKenna said, now turn it on. He turned it on. He said, oh my God, at this rate, it'll fill up in five minutes. I said, I know. I said, and the water's hotter than you're even going to use here. So you're going to have to add cold water. He says, why, why, why has nobody ever told me this? So most people don't understand or, or study or go in depth or, or anything like that. Yeah. And you know, what you said about doing things right and being able to go back in and talk to a customer then you've done it and then you're like well, well here's why this is important and they're they don't get it they're like well why hadn't anybody else told me that because they're salespeople. yeah they don't understand it they they've never been on a roof w- with a hammer and a a box cutter and and everything in their hands that it takes to get this job done yeah and i'm like you i think the very first plumber that that one of the first plumbers that i worked with was like you it's like and i used to ask myself later you know i'd get in and do something and if, if i had a question is this good enough it'd be like what would austin do like austin wouldn't leave it like this right it's like okay let's, let's, let me take this apart let me redo this let me redo that you know i have people call me sometimes when i was still running the company so i'd be like look man th- th- this is messed up i'm like well have you left yet I'm like, well no it's like th- then you're not done with it yeah you know Take yeah. the time to finish it. Take the time to do it right. But I do. I always look back and think about Austin, one of the first plumbers I worked with, that, I mean, did every single thing right every day. And it's funny because I asked him one day, I said, I said, why is it so important to you you do it right each and every time? And he said, the last thing I ever wanted to do is get called out to somebody's house and fix something. And then I run into them at a restaurant yeah. Or something later. And they look at me and say, Hey, you, you screwed us. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you did us wrong. You, 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 you did a shoddy job. It, it ruined our cabinets. It, it ruined our carpet. It, it did this or that. He said, man, if I'm out with my family and that ever happened, he said, I just, I, I don't want that. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what a way to look at it. Yeah. And I do. I love that professionalism. Yeah. Later when you hired people, did you try and instill that in them? Cause yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first guy that i hired like it took me it took me a long time to get to that point too long really and and again i wasn't trying to grow wasn't looking to grow really a big business or anything just uh but when i finally got to the spot where i was like i'm losing jobs i can't get to everybody my service of what i'm providing is suffering uh because i just can't physically get to all these people Mm -hmm. uh i hired my first guy and it probably man i look back at it now and i'm like it was good but man i micromanaged the heck out of that guy for like six months like i mean i wouldn't let him do anything it was like you just you're gonna follow me you're gonna learn you're gonna do exactly what i do and it's mm-hmm. like it took me forever to get to a spot to finally go okay you can go represent me out there and do this stuff so you know you say you micromanaged him for that long and probably shouldn't have done it that long but but i think had he shown you what he was showing you six months later at three months? Yeah. Then you're like, hey, you know what? I remember my first hire whenever I opened Texas Green Plumbing was a tradesman plumber, meaning he had two years experience. He had that tradesman license. He could go do anything. But I'm like, you, it's like, no, I want you working with me. I want to see how you do. I want to see what you do. And then when I did get so busy that I needed to bring somebody else in, it was a master plumber a brother uh, of the one that I'd worked for and learned a lot from another really good plumber. But this tradesman kept being like, like, look, I know as much as y'all I've got a license too. It was like, wait, I've got 40 years experience, probably 35, 38 at the time. He's got 10 more years experience than I do. And you keep coming saying that, you know, as much as us, it's not possible. Yeah. And it, 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 matter of fact, I, I remember, I remember Lynn calling me one day and he says, look, I'm going to leave this guy sitting on the curb. <laughs> he says, I, I'm not arguing with him. I'm not fighting with him. I'm not doing it anymore. And, you know, you bring in these young kids, especially if they do have some experience, mm-hmm. they think they know everything. Yeah. And it's like, wait, just cause you know, to do it one way doesn't mean that's the right way to do it. Yeah. Or the way I want it done with my company. Yeah. How, did you get better at, at training and, and working with uh, and, and helping? Yeah. Um, 
now, I mean, fast forward to now, like, you know, we've gotten to the point now where we don't even typically hire anyone with experience. Like I, I truly prefer somebody coming in with zero and let us build them from there so we can teach them our way. So now like when we bring guys in, like we'll, we'll typically put them through six to eight weeks of training. And, and that's pretty, I always tell guys coming in, like I always try to be a hundred percent transparent and go, Hey, this may not be for you. May, it's not for everybody, but this is what we do. And this is how we do it. And it's pretty hard training. Uh, and I'll, I'll a lot of that and, and even continuing like education, like we bring the guys in twice a week, uh, to go over anything that we saw the previous week where we could have done better or whatever. And we'll train on that stuff. And, uh, I think a lot of that stuff came like from the fire service for me. Mm -hmm. Like I learned, I always tell people, I'm like, man, the fire service taught me a ton of like valuable lessons and, and then taking some of that and mimicking it over here in the business world has been awesome. Uh, just cause just like firemen, like, man, we, if, if you have a emergency at your house or your house is on fire, you don't want somebody learning at that point. Yeah. And you want them like, well, oh, somebody just got the experience. Yeah. You want them coming off that. Your top fireman, please don't, don't send out the rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it's the same thing, same concept in business of like, man, we, I don't want our guys training on people's homes. Like they need to know what we're doing before we start actually doing it for somebody and charging somebody money. So no, I, I love that. I, I think that's such a great idea. And this video is sponsored by leak pro go check out leak dash pro.com. God, I would think in six to eight weeks to, to me. And this is one place where I disagree with the Texas state board of plumbing examiners. I think that, and really most licensing agencies, I think that if we took time to really train people, not just, I mean, if you you look at an apprentice that goes to work for a company, that apprentice comes in, he goes out, he's working with a journeyman, hopefully a good one, that's going to teach him the right ways, but actual productivity time is about 50%, you know, efficiency. Yeah. You know, there. This is Dallas. We we have to drive, and so really, you're working about four hours a day. Well, if you're working with a journeyman, that journeyman's probably doing most of the work in the beginning. You're watching. You're a grunt. Mm-hmm. You're cleaning up. You're sweeping. You're not spending a lot of time learning plumbing. And I have an idea for a training center that that, that, that I'm going to build. But my thought is. Man, in eight weeks in a training center, you could probably teach somebody to be a roofer. Yeah. There, there's wood, there's shingles, there's tar people, there, there's trim, there's nails, there's a hammer, yep. there's a box cutter, and there's a lot, a magnet to pick up the nails. Yeah. That's, that's the majority of it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it is the, I, I would say, like, we, we keep a pretty close eye on guys, even, like, that first year... Like, and I always tell you, there's some people, and I think it's just how you're hardwired, like everybody wants something to be uh, black or white. Like, man, this is it. You can't live in a gray. Just tell me the way to do anything. It's 10 different ways. Man, I always tell those guys, I'm like, look, man, that you're going to run across hundreds of different scenarios. Like, and I can't give you the playbook on every one of those. It's like, you got to understand like the general concept and I, I think that's why it's super important even like our sales team and stuff like i want those guys to know how to put on a roof because it's like if you don't know that and you're out telling somebody about it or talking through it it's like it just you know i always tell people like i was not i'm not like a great sales guy but man i knew what i was doing so good that it made it made me easily be able to sell jobs just because people could tell like you knew what you were talking about like and it made them feel comfortable, you yeah, know. Makes all sense in the world, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, but I think it's. I, I love the idea of the training center. I love the idea of it, it's worked great for us of just taking that time. Costs us money, uh, but but I have to believe it saves us and makes us money on the back end of it of uh, just pouring into them up front. Plus, we get to. There's a lot of guys like I. 
if we're hiring five guys, I need to hire 10 because typically five of them aren't going to make it out of there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, it just, it is. And I always tell them that going into it. It's like, hey, at any given point. Yeah, look around the room. Yeah. Y'all aren't all going to be sitting here together at the end of this. It's like some of y'all will say, no, this isn't for me. I'm leaving. And some of y'all, we're going to come to you and say, hey, this isn't for you. And you need to go find and, something. And if you do fill a room with 10 of them where they all hung around, it's like, man, we hit the jackpot. Yeah. You, you yeah. I, yeah. I got 10 roofers now. Let, let, yeah. Let's turn up the marketing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's interesting because plumbing is the same way. You, you get people in. Over my YouTube channel, I, I do this free little mini course. And it's, do you understand that there's there's a difference in plumbing? There's commercial. There's residential. There's service, there's new construction, there's union, there's non-union. And most plumbers I bring in and, and ask those things, they didn't even know there were other opportunities. Hmm. They're like, man, I just, I didn't get it. I didn't want to get into plumbing because I thought I'd have to touch poop all day. Yeah. And you talk to a real plumber, it's like, how often do you touch poop, man? And you might be around it once a month. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> it, it, that's not what we deal with. Um, and if you're a commercial plumber, you never deal with it. Yeah, you know, unless you're doing a a remodel or or a, or a tie-in or something like that, but you're lucky because you you started off in sales, then you started off doing repair, and I guess you moved to installs. Yeah, I I never well, I did a couple of the installs myself, but it, it was so when I first started out, all I did as a company was repairs, and then I had another uh, roofing company that I would sub that I would basically sell the full roofs to. Yeah. Uh, Cause at the time, like when I, it, it probably, I would say that for about four years, I did it like that. And then I ended up bringing on my own crews and everything and we handled all of it, but it, it took a little while cause I just stayed so busy doing repairs by myself that it was easier to go here. I'm, I don't do the full roof replacement, but this guy does. And I would let them handle it, you know? It's, it's a number one. It's a great idea because you're still a salesman. Yeah. You're still making that money. Yeah. Now you've got roofing companies that that you know. I would send work to them. I would not send work to them. Yeah. You know, it's funny. People call me and say, "Hey, I, I'm looking for a plumbing company," and, and then I'll do a recommendation, or they'll say, "Hey, I had a plumber come out. What do you think about yada yada yada?" And I never want to trash anybody. I'm like, you know what? I just I haven't heard good things about them, but but they may be great, depending on who I talk to. Yeah. Uh or you know what? I've never even heard of them. Which there's seven thousand something plumbing companies in Texas. Mm. It's always nice to be able to pick and choose who you send work to. Yeah, because at the end of the day, they're gonna come back and say, "Mark, you told me about this company, right. and guess what? They they robbed me. They, yeah. they 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 put in a horrible roof. That they, they collected all the money up front. They never finished the work. They left nails in the yard. I mean, there's a million different things can happen. Yeah, was it a big step going from a roof repair to an install? Is it completely different? It it is. We're doing what I was doing, where I was in control of everything, the work. Oh yeah, the everything. You know, you knew every customer by name. Yeah, you'd already talked to. Uh, them. So when you go to an in, a new like install, well now I'm relying upon the crew. You bet. Making sure they're doing it right. Making sure you know. And a lot of those guys, I. It, it's so hard. It's taken forever, like with our crews, just to change that mindset of like the plant out in the front yard is very important to Miss Jones. You like, are. <laughs> that one shrub, that that one, one shrub, shrub, yes. shrub with a pile of shingles Absolutely. on top of it. And, and just getting that mindset down of like them caring so much like about the home and what they're doing and not just getting up there and yanking and throwing shingles and doing whatever, but actually think thinking through it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like, and your y'all stuff's probably like this in some ways, but it's like the actual roof people typically wouldn't know if you did a good job, if you didn't do a good job to them, they look at it. Unless it's leaking. It's a shingle. It's not like everything must be fine. Uh, But when you do that install, what they care about is everything that they're dealing with on the ground. Like, I mean, again, like how many nails are left in my flower bed? Do I have flat tires? You bet. All that little stuff. So, so yeah, it was more, uh, for me when I moved like from repairs to then taking on installs, it went from doing work to managing work, uh, kind of on that part of it. So, yeah. And I've told you my, my first coach was Michael Gerber wrote the e-myth books and 
you're either the technician, the manager, or the entrepreneur. Yeah. It's hard to be all three. Yeah. And, and which is what you did in the beginning. It's what, what I did in the beginning. Yeah. It's what we all do when, when we start out. You know, we, we walk in from working with somebody else one day and thought, like, wow, you know what? I can open, open my own company. There's a lot of hats to wear. Yeah. What do you wish you'd have known more of about in the very beginning? I don't know that I would change anything. I mean, I learned so many valuable lessons you bet. along the way that it's hard to ever go, man, I wish I had just came out with the playbook, you know, right from the get-go. Because I don't think, I don't think it would have made as much sense or... I don't know. I don't know that you would care about it the same way you do when you learn the hard lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, going into it, I, I wasn't just learning business. Like, I mean, I had I, to do it over again, I would have started a little bit sooner of hiring the right people and getting them in the right seats. I think that's very important. I mean, I answered my own phone calls for 10 years, you know, would have hired that person a lot faster. Like, mm-hmm. man, I remember hiring my first uh lady in the office that answered the phones and took care of some of the paperwork and i look back at that and i'm like that is that was the most valuable person i ever could have hired like that freed me up so much um because i think you i think that's probably the piece i would say is just putting the right people in the right seats to free you up to do like what you're really good at and what you enjoy doing and Mm -hmm. that allows you to grow and you know do more stuff Mine was probably my wife at the time was literally, Roger, you're, you're, you're doing everything in the world. Yeah. Let me answer the phones. I'm like, you can't answer the phones. You can't talk plumbing. It's like, like I can answer the phones. And her role grew. And, and literally after I started doing social media, she was running the entire company. She went on to be a coach for one of the best practice groups that, oh, wow. that, that we've talked about earlier. Yeah. Because she understood the company. She understood how to run. Better than that, she understood people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that's one thing that I would tell people is, look, you don't have to find somebody that understands your business. They've got to understand people. Yeah. Because if they understand people, look, you can teach them the rest of it. Yeah. And it makes all the difference in the world. How did you find your first person? My first person was the guy that took me six months, like, uh, and he actually came from the supply house that I always bought my material from. So he had approached me about a year before going, Hey, I want to come work for you. And I was like, no, you got wife, four kids. Like, I don't want the responsibility of feeding your family. And, uh, and then we finally got to a point where I was like, okay, man, like, come on, if you want to do it, this is what it's going to look like had a real good relationship with the store manager. So I had taken him aside first and been like, Hey, this guy wants to come work for me. How do you feel about that? I don't want to be still in your, mm-hmm. so I did it the right way. And then he came on board, started. Uh, and then after that, I had another guy that came on board, uh, from another company with a lot of good, you know, morals work as a really good guy. He's still with me today. Um, and then we hired the lady in the office that uh, came. It was actually one of those guys' connections that knew a little bit of the roofing and all good that deal. stuff. So, yeah, it all all fell into place and played out good. So when your business started growing, number one, it's a lot more work for an owner uh, because we, we want to keep our fingers and hands involved in everything. How did you grow without it just taking a complete wear and tear on you? From when I had hired that one guy, my first guy, to having two in an office and a person in the office was probably uh, over a two-year period. Uh, so it didn't, like, blow it up. And then it was like there was somewhere in there that it just went crazy. And before you know it, like, I had 17 guys, uh, three people in the office. It was like, what just happened here, yeah. you know? And... uh so started really focusing more on the teach and train. Um, and I kind of stopped all my little day to day of, I wasn't selling, I wasn't doing anything. It was like, I'm giving this stuff to you guys to mm-hmm. do and relinquishing kind of that, uh, to the right people. And then it was really just monitoring, uh, a whole lot of monitoring of like, what's going on? What are we doing here? 
And that was kind of the initial stage of growth that we did. Some of that was forced, like, you know, the roofing is a little bit different than plumbing of like our, some of our demand is storm driven and it just played out to where it was like, we got to a certain point and then man had like three, four years of massive hail, hail storms, you know, one of them here in Wiley, you bet that massive one. So it was like, there was so much work to do. It was like, it was just really sitting back and watching, keeping track of everything, making sure everybody's doing stuff right. And um doing that so were you continuously learning or were you working back then did did you go to conferences did you go to trade shows did you do anything like that yeah yeah i uh went to one of those sport groups we were talking about and kind of i learned a lot of stuff there i'm not a detail-oriented guy when it comes to like i if you've told me mark your job is sit behind this computer screen all day long and look at numbers and plug in data yeah just lose lose it yeah like, oh, if you, no, i get that i get that. so you know but it's super important to learn and understand what you need to be looking at how to get those numbers all that stuff so that then like basically i i took that information and then found the right person that loves sitting behind the desk plugging in numbers going here's what we need like Here's what we need to do. Please, you know, provide me this data so that I can sift through it and monitor everything better. And that was kind of part of that. That's uh, huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I would say too, I uh, kind of rewind and uh, we, you know, we started, I think, the other, you know about it, everybody else does, but like using those, the culture index stuff, like mm-hmm. that, that was a massive deal. Because when you can finally learn that not everybody's wired the same and everybody has different strengths, weaknesses, that stuff, and then really using that stuff to plug those people into the right positions, man, it, it starts becoming a game changer when you do that. That That is huge. I, I studied, I started studying PCM, Process Communication Model. It's a personality profile, mm-hmm. some, some of the cultures similar yeah. to DISC. Yeah. I tell people it's disc on steroids. Yeah. If you really want to learn people, learn PCM, study it, learn it. It's everything from the language you use, the words you use, how you communicate, body gestures. Uh, There's a million different things. Yeah. But you put all this together and it helps you communicate with them in their language. Yeah. And I tell people, you know, if I'm speaking English and you speak Spanish, you speak Russian, you speak German. And I just stand in front of y'all speaking English. Nobody's getting it. Yeah. But if I know how to speak a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Russian, a little bit of German, man, I can use your language and now it's going to be like, okay. Mm -hmm. And learning things like that, especially as a company owner, especially as someone out doing sales, we don't all communicate the same way. What kind of training do you put your guys through to help them understand things like that? Everybody we hire now goes through the culture index, strength finder stuff, all that. And then our whole leadership team, like we send them off to get trained uh, on how to read that stuff and then how to know how to communicate. Like, cause like you see, I mean, it, it, uh, honestly, that wasn't up until like a few years ago that we really started honing in on that stuff. And it was, uh, it's just been great when we have a guy come in like, um, once a year and he'll sit with our leadership team to go, Hey, let's look at the people you're leading and let's see, you know, compared to how your style is, what do they look like and how do you need to manage these people? Cause they're all different. Like, Mm -hmm. man, that's the one thing I've learned. It's like you, you can't have a generic, uh, way that you communicate or lead people. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to kind of adapt a little bit to what, hits home with them and then really focus in on that stuff if you're going to get the most the best out of them and and honestly for me it's like man i when we hire people it's like man i I want them to stay with us forever Mm -hmm. uh and i want them to really enjoy doing what they do and it's like if if we're not communicating properly or or if i'm leading you wrong you're not going to enjoy it and it'll it'll be a uphill battle for both of us at that point. So, you know, I like that because they say eighty five percent of people hate the job they have, and I'm like, man, that's eight and a half people out of ten. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a lot of people. 
I love what I do. I love, I love getting up and going. But, but I always have. And, and it's funny, I was at a social media conference talking one day, and I sat there talking to a buddy of mine, and somebody else came up, you know, caught the end of the conversation. I said, all right, man, look, I, I got to get. And he hollered at me later. He said, you know, the, the, the person who walked up is listening to you talk, and they've seen you on video, and they're like, you know, do you really think he's that passionate about plumbing? <laughs> and my buddy just started laughing and said, oh, my God, you apparently don't know Roger. <laughs> And it blows people's mind. It's yeah. like, it's like you know, you, you're talking about getting up on a roof and solving a problem. When you're a plumber, you're crawling around under a house or, you know, under cabinets or, or, or whatever the deal is. But I used to love going in, just crawling around under a house and, hey, here's where your problem is. Hey, here's what you've got. This is what I see. People are like, how can you love crawling around under a house? Well, talked about that earlier, too. I used to love going out and playing in the mud. Yeah. You know, people are like, dude, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Nothing. It's just, yeah. it's what I enjoy. How long did you have your business before you brought in a partner? Uh, well, it was just three years ago. So I guess 23 years. Uh, how, how was your growth before your partner? Good. Uh, it was good. Yeah. Everything was great. Um, but again, you know, I was still at the fire department, so I spent three days a week on my business, not seven days a week, you know, so it was a little bit different, um, uh, look there, uh, and the partnership that we kind of chose to do was really based off of, um, I had gotten to a point where I was like ready to go further, you know, and I knew if I was going to be able to do that, I needed somebody that could fill in the gaps of my just weakness of not knowing or the knowledge of some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where that partnership kind of stemmed from. And, and to, I always tell people, man, I'm like, I, which I, I've had a few businesses, like different stuff. And well, actually a lot, you wouldn't believe like I skipped over all this, but like for the first probably 10 years of roofing, I tried everything I could do to get out of roofing. Yeah. <laughs> I had started up so many little spinoff stuff, all this little, but I never found anything that I was like, man. I'm just good at this. I enjoy it, and I'm going to keep plugging away. So I, I was the same way. So I started plumbing in high school. So I've been plumbing basically yeah. 44 years. But I've also been a cosmetologist, a massage therapist, wow. a bodyguard, a bouncer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you name it, I've done it. Yeah. So I, yeah. I know that feeling. So I think, and looking back at it, I think that's probably that just entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. of just going, man, is there, let me just, let's just try something else. Let's do something. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that was always fun to me. But the one thing I had learned kind of along the way is like partnerships are not necessarily the right deal. You bet. A good deal uh, doesn't make sense for everybody. Timing has a lot to do with that. I, I, I'm a full, uh, firm believer in the timing. Uh, I did another podcast with somebody and they were talking about uh, partnerships. And the one thing I always, it's like, and you should probably be in business at least five years by yourself before you ever even think about it. Uh, mainly because like you, it's super hard to go into a relationship if you don't know all the pieces you're like that you're going to deal with or where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, all that stuff. And just figuring it out a little bit on your own, mm -hmm. uh, before you make that dive. Um, but it's worked out great for us. For us, it was, uh, you know, I mean, we've over doubled the size of our company now and, uh, everything's great. And they're able to fill in on a lot of those, like I said, the gaps that we were missing on. So I don't know if that answered your No, it's, no it, it's, it, and it's your answer, not mine. Partnerships are tough. Uh, I've got two different businesses right, right now or that I've got partners in. One of the biggest things that I think helps a partnership is communication. Yeah. And, you know, one, well, God, actually, actually both the businesses really don't communicate with them at all. It's tough to run a business or be part of a business. And I'm a minority enough in both of them that, that it really doesn't matter. But it's nice to know what's going on. Yeah. Communication in both of them were pretty good in the beginning, and then it goes downhill quick. Yeah. You know, as a minority, it, it's it's easy to say, look, you know, granted, you're majority, you're, you're, you're the decision maker, yada, yada, yada. What advice would you give somebody that's thinking about a partner or bringing in someone? Because we, as company owners, we get people call us all the yeah. time and say, hey, man, I want to buy into your company. Yeah, you see me doing good things. You see the good part. 
You're not going to like the bad part behind the scenes mm-hmm. where, where we struggled last month or, or whatever. Yeah. It's like getting married. And I would always tell people, like, if you're going to do that, like, you should probably date for about a year. Yeah. Like, figure it out. Like, because you, a lot of it, which, which I know there's all different types of partnership deals out there right now, especially all the private equity firm. There's all, there's small, there's big, you, all you bet. Stuff, but it's like, you really need to know the team you're partnering with, or at least if it's one individual or whoever, man, you need to know them like, like, you know, your wife or anybody. It's like, you need to see them go through the good times, the bad times, how they're going to respond, you know, what their strengths are. Like, I, I, just, I, I think it's super hard. And I think a lot of people dive off into a partnership just thinking, well, this is going to make my life easier. Or, you know, this is going to be one way. And it's like, you get into it and it's like, well, this actually makes my life harder. <laughs> now I'm fighting all the time. Uh-huh. Now I'm doing this. <laughs> and so I just think there's a ton of pitfalls with it. And you really got to know the person that you're that you're going in business with. So, If you're enjoying the Trade Talks, hit that subscribe or follow button, which helps us produce this awesome blue collar content absolutely free. And now... Back to the episode. What have you learned in the partnership that, that this helped you grow? This, for me, it's really systems, processes. Uh, Which I'm not a systems and process guy. I'm not either. Never really was. You know, everything was like, eh, we'll be fine. We wing it. We, I'll just work harder or whatever. It's like, but like when you're structuring for growth you're shooting for excellence, like all that stuff you have. The thing I've learned is like, you have to have that stuff in place. It's like, it, it doesn't, it's really hard to repeat something if you don't have a system and process. And it's like, it's really hard to train people. If you don't have that, it's hard to duplicate it the next time. It's like, you just for growth, if you're trying to grow or whatever, I would say, man, you have to really get down and have, that system and process built out for every little piece of your company uh so that you one can hold people accountable to certain things you can measure stuff like you can really check it and make sure it's good that's that's a big one i was at a networking event one time with a bunch of entrepreneurs and one of them stood up and spoke and he said anytime you have something that you do more than once you should have a process for it because I'm thinking, we, we don't have a whole lot of processes. Just saying the word system and process, like, probably for you, like, I see, I think you just wrinkled your phone. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody hates Absolutely. It. It's like, Except systems and process people. They love yeah, it. They get yeah, excited yeah. about it. But I think, like, even for, like, people like me and you, like, the one thing I didn't understand, like, I hated that word, those words. Uh, but it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Right. Like, you're not... It doesn't have to be. You're not changing directions to build a rocket ship. Yeah. Like, man, it it can be a super simple system and process. Mm-hmm. And that was the piece that I never really grasped probably until we really started building. I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. Right. Okay. It's not scary. Oh, no. Once you get in it, you're like, okay, this makes sense. sense. Like, yeah. It's like, you're not giving me all these little guardrails around. Like, it, it just, you know, mm-hmm. it's not as bad as what you think uh, once you really get it built out. Because at the end of the day, again, it makes my life a heck of a lot easier as we move forward and as we teach new people to do stuff, train them, hold people accountable, all that stuff. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. it it's really funny. I, I remember I, I went to work at a pizza place. I was I applied for a restaurant manager job, got hired, and to do it, you've got like an eight-week training program, you know. You do the dishes for a week. You do this for a week. You do this. You, you literally, you're, you're all over the place. You learn everything, which I think is a great way to do it. I remember when they put me on, on pizzas, you know, you know, making pies. Yeah. Literally, you could just, you could look up and they had cards. You know, you're making a pepperoni pizza. There, There's 28 pieces of pepperoni on it. Here's how you lay them out. And, you know, you start in the middle and, and then you work around and then you work around and then you work around. Yeah. But you do it this fast. Yeah. You, you know, that, yeah. you do it 90 miles an hour. Uh, how many cups of cheese do you put in? How many ladles of sauce? How do you spend the sauce? And so many things. That, and I'm like, even folding the boxes. How do you fold the boxes? Yeah. It's like you just look up and it's step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Wow. I remember speaking at a real estate agent's office here in Dallas about plumbing. 
and he got up and, and talked to the crowd news uh, to, to the crowd to his new agents and he introduced one of the girls he said you know th- this is the girl who runs everything it says like i'm a thirty thousand foot guy she's the systems and process person she put everything together to make it where we can do what we do each and every day systematically mm-hmm. and I'm like god that's what i need i need a systems and process person yeah yeah there, there, it's hard to find a good one it's a lot it once you find them though man highly valuable people oh yeah in your company and it makes again it makes our life a lot easier when like a lot of that is just you know when we first start building it out it's like i don't even know how to like i got all the info up here i know exactly what to do how mm-hmm. to do it but building that was again just a daunting like it just felt scary, scary. Yeah. yeah it's like i don't want that. uh and I think that's probably what happens to all of us. It's like, that's not, a, maybe not your strong suit. So we run from it. We run, we just ignore it and yep. we keep pushing forward. And it's like, you'll be fine, but it won't ever be as good as it could be. Like if you did that. So it's like, but you got that right person. And then really all you're doing then is just bring dumping everything out and then let them put it all together. Yeah. And, and then, like, and then read through it and say, wait, we missed us, missed a step. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's then it's good as gold. Then the I love the pizza analogy part. It's like I, just like when you're building pizzas, it's like there for a little while you probably had to look at that stuff. Oh yeah. But then after a while, man, it's you got it. You know, it's embedded in you. You got it. Maybe occasionally you glance up and go, I mean, pizza. Like how, how many? Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, then it just becomes part of what you do, and and then you don't even think of it as a system or process. So. It's pretty cool. Since you've brought in a partner, your growth has changed. What are you doing now to grow that that you weren't doing before? A lot of it has to do with the marketing, (laughs) which is a hot topic in the trades. Yeah. I mean, I, I know we talked about it earlier as well, but it's like, I, so before the partnership stuff, I had dabbled. I would, that's the best word I can say for it. So it's all we can do. Yeah, it's all we can uh, Hired some people. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's so hard. Like, if you're not knowledgeable in it or efficient in it, when you go hire these people, this is kind of what we were talking you about. Know. Like, man, it'd take me a year to go, wait a minute, man. It's yeah, really not working. These guys aren't doing We're just, <laughs> It's not working. Yeah. Okay, let's start over. Well, then you're another year down the road, and it's like, man, that that uh, piece, and that's that was one of the great things with the partnership that we were doing is my partner and the man, their forte is marketing. And it was like, so it's like, they're really good at that, which was helpful to me because I'm not. So, mm-hmm. like, being able to watch that part of it grow and feed the company so that we can build more sales guys build more roofing crews you know and do that stuff that's really and truly kind of i would say the the piece to growth that that's been different so i heard you on the radio oh yeah how was it to do your first radio ad uh you know i'm fine i don't mind radio uh we had done some tv and i was like i can't do that that's not me I I just did not want to get on TV, so I was like, we hired some actors and stuff for that part of it. But I I like the radio. The radio's fun. Uh, And most of the time, you guys are good enough with editing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, you get some great people back there. Make people sound okay. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So tell everybody again who you are and and, and what you do. Uh, So Mark Latham... Part owner of Firehouse Roofing, we do r- r- pretty much all exterior home services, so roof gutters, siding, uh, windows, and we'll be adding like exterior painting to the platform by the end of the year. So good for you. Yeah. If anybody wanted to get into roofing, anybody's out there today and they're like, man, I've never thought about that. But that, and I mean, there's no licensing in Texas. No. They keep talking about it, but they've been talking about it for years. What would you tell somebody that that is graduating high school this year or graduating college that, that they went to school, they figured this out, can't get a job in the degree that they went to college for? Yeah. 
what would you recommend to them if they were interested in learning about roofing, getting into it, maybe, maybe one day open on their own company? Um, all depends on the person. Um, and I, I, to me, it's like, what, what part of roofing do you love to do? Just like any business, like, do you love sales? Do you love hands-on? Like, do you love, like, we did, we did this, uh, I don't want to get too far into it. I don't know what their disclosures are, but, uh, one of our big brand manufacturers is starting to build out like a roofing university. Um, and so we got to be a part of that, their first class, uh, here a couple of months ago. It's pretty cool. I mean, they're building out roofing platforms. They're teaching guys how to roof. And part of that, uh, we had a panel, there was like four company owners that we sat up and talked to the class and it was really just explaining to them. It's like any, uh, like, I, I think people take trades, roofing, plumbing, electric, HVAC, uh, any of the, uh, whatever else. And they go, man, yeah, but I don't want to be a roofer. I want to be a plumber. Oh yeah. I don't be that. Like just because that's not their forte, but like you forget that it's a business. Like it's not just roofing. Like take the, I mean, all that is a minor piece to a company is just the one little roofing, plumbing, whatever. Uh I mean, you, you have, as you build those businesses, you have sales teams, you have marketing teams, we have coordinators who are scheduling jobs. We have people that are answering the phones. We have admin people filing paperwork. We have, and there's a lot of people doing exactimates. Like, I mean, they're, there's all kinds of moving parts within that company. And it's like you, just because you don't like one part, doesn't mean you wouldn't like one or the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I would say, you know, depending on a person, but go, you know, do your homework, find a good company uh, and try to get hired on and just start and start learning. Uh, We, we typically now, like we, we kind of have some entry level positions for those, uh, you know, younger kids coming out of high school or whatever that don't really know, uh, that we'll usually start them out as. And a lot of times that's like in the project management side of things, because you, you gain so much knowledge on that end and there's not a massive risk of you impacting our company by doing something necessarily wrong. So it's like, we can put you in one of those positions and you can really watch, learn, uh, and fill it out. So we've kind of, that's our entry level spot. And then we start typically promoting people up depending upon, do they want to go sales? Do they want to go more technical, like doing the work? Mm-hmm. Do they like marketing? What do they like? And so then we kind of create their career path I like that. Uh, through there. Um, I would say the hard part, and this is probably with any of the trades is, I was especially roofing since we don't have any licensing or anything like there's tons of companies out there and man, you, you just, you don't, the structures of those companies are so wildly different. So, and let's talk about that just a second. You know, you said go to work for a good company. It's kind of like marketing. How do you know if it's a good company? Man, I, I always start just like I would start as a homeowner looking for a contractor, get online. You bet. Look at the reviews. Look at the reviews. Look at Better Business Bureau. Check out all the little different pieces that you could go no or yes. Super hard, and you know this, very deceiving looking in a website. Oh, yeah. Because you, you could look like you're a $100 million company and you're well, too My company started you know. growing. The, the, the marketing company I hired at that time said roger you 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 don't look as big as baker brothers milestone berkey's you 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 don't look that big i said well i'm not he said yeah but but the customer looking at the computer doesn't know that yeah make yourself look that big yeah yeah so very it's hard to tell off of you bet absolutely i mean i I would say that's probably i don't mean it's worth glancing at but i wouldn't do your right uh make your decision off there and then you know i mean i it's Go talk with them, you know, put a phone call in, go interview with them, see if the culture, you know, I mean, uh, everybody, everybody's culture in their company is going to look different and feel different. So it's like, man, I I would say, especially as a a younger person trying to get into one of them of go, 
don't just settle for one. Like, man, you go out. Like, I, I, I want people to, when they come interview with us, I want them to ask a ton of questions. You bet. I want them, I want to feel confident that not only do we want you, you want us. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it, 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 again, I want people when they come on board, if it makes sense, I want them to be there forever. Like, yep. so, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. You, you probably have a better no, no, answer. No, no, we, but we've all got a different answers. And, and then, and that's why I ask if, uh, if somebody's out there listening today and they're like, Hey, I want to be a roofer. I, I like what Mark had to say. Mm. What, where can they find you? Uh, where's cool. your website? Yeah. Firehouseroofing.com. Mm. Can get on there. We have a careers page. They can go fill something out. Uh, we have a full-time recruiter that will answer and respond, get back with them. And then really on our website, we kind of have our, uh, positions laid out of what somebody wants to do. But again, it's not like, I would, especially if they don't know, like, man, just say that, come in. Like, I mean, we have yeah. people all the time that come in. I'm just looking for a job, man. For one position. Yeah. And it's like, man, I got this other position that may fit you a heck yeah. of a lot better. I like, like And we pivot. Yeah. Like so how much money can somebody who's green make starting out? And I know a lot of that depends on the interview process. It depends yeah. on a lot of different things. Um, Every position pays different. Um, I, of course, you and I both know sales is where you bet the money is uh, typically in the long run. In the long run, and and sales is one of those parts where it's like it's a wide gap. I mean, you know, between the best and the worst. That's right. You bet. I mean, there, there's some people hustle, names. some don't. Some are like, hey, I just you give me a you give me a name and an address, I'll go talk to them. Yeah. Some are like. You give me a name and an address, I'm going to go talk to 10 different houses. Yeah. 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 So that one, you know, if you got a really hard charging kid or whatever that's uh, ambitious and eager and wants to kind of be in control of that. Now, flip side of that is those are commission, 100% commission you bet. jobs. Like, there's no guarantee. That's why you got to be a go-getter. That's right. So, okay, you're, you're salespeople. What's the low end make? What's the high end make? Um, they can make anywhere from seventy thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. I mean, it's, it's not a bad gap. Wide, wide gap, not a bad. Um, gap. And then all of our other, you know, positions, like I said, that project manager position, uh, those guys are typically starting at around fifty, uh, which is not bad for mm-hmm. uh somebody just getting started. Absolutely. Now, we'll say like most of those jobs, like. If they're driving a company vehicle, you got to be 21 is kind of the gateway for getting you on insurance, stuff like that. So there are a few little deals, but cool. Uh, yeah. I like that. All right. So number one, this has been great. Th- thoroughly enjoyed this. <clears throat> Let's go back to the day that, that you walked out of high school, graduated, woke up the next morning and you're, you're headed out to work. Ooh. Knowing everything you know now, what advice would you give yourself if you could go back and just give yourself some advice? What would it be? Man, I did everything I thought I wanted to do. The only things I would probably tweak or change. Um, man, I don't know. I was a pretty hard worker. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I think at that age, um, if I had walked out the door knowing everything I know now, I think I could be, I could have gotten down the road a lot faster. Um, but I don't know that, I, I don't know that, again, like what we were saying, man, I, I think there's a ton that goes along with building wisdom and everything else. And, and that comes through all those learning curves of, the thing I would tell kids these days is like, stop looking for the magic bullet, man. Oh yeah. I I want the easy button. (laughs) Yeah. It's not worth it. It's like, man, it's like take money. Like somebody that goes wins the lottery versus somebody that's worked their tail off for it. Those two lifestyles are completely different. Mm -hmm. And those two, uh, just views of what they have is completely different. And then, and it's like, I, I always get kids coming in that are younger adults and, and they're just looking for the get rich quick you bet. deal. And it's like, man, that is, that's not a good way to, to look at this. It's kind of like the kid that, that went down and signed up for the Navy 
they wouldn't let him be admiral, so he didn't sign up. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I want to start at the top. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. You understand? Yeah. Right. I mean, I love the, you know, I think we've all seen the little picture of the iceberg where it shows success. And it's like, man, a lot of times all the people see is a little piece sticking up out of the water. You Forget about all the stuff underneath that took to get it there. But uh, I, I think it's super important, man. Like, I, I got three kids of my own and I want them to work their tail off and earn it. Like, and because I think there's so many things that are going to help them along the way as an adult that if they bypass that, man, you, you miss out on a lot. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Yep. It's a big deal. Yep. Mark, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It was good to be here.